Hey weirdlings, it's Danny Danger, and this is my poll list for September the 23rd. Yeah. 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 In power up number three, our heroes finally get together in their secret lair that's not really a lair, and they're going to talk about costumes and secret identities, you know, all of the BFF stuff that superhero teams should talk about. I'm really, really excited about Avatar The Last Airbender. Every time one of these volumes comes out, I get so excited. I'll be reading Diamond and I'll be like, no! Nah! And then whoever is in the room with me is like, what's wrong with you? Should we maybe call her parent or guardian? Avatar The Last Airbender, volume 10, Smoke and Shadow, part one. I'm just saying there's a cult that wants Ozai to come back. They're no good. They're gonna do something bad to Zuko and I don't like it, but I'm gonna read. And seriously, seriously, who does ta who are the Beifong children's parents? Seriously, what is going on? Seriously, I keep like rereading Avatar to think like maybe the answer will like present itself so I can figure out who Sue and Lin's dad is. Nothing, nothing. I'm just saying I ship her and Sokka, Toph and Sokka, Taka. Toph totally ships her and Sokka together. She crushes on him hard. It's just that uh, crushes get in with the rocks. <laughs> Red Sonia 18 is going to see Gail Simone wrapping up the series. Now, I was a little confused about this particular solicit because it sounds like something that already happened earlier in the series. And I just read number 17 like last night and it doesn't seem to make story sense. Um, but I don't know, whatever. Scorier's number four also marks the ending of the series. And if you haven't read this, this has been a really great series, especially if you like like wartime stories or small furry mammals. But the last issue actually seriously had me in an emotional funk and I can't even. In Batgirl number 44, we're gonna see more Velvet Tiger and I am really liking this whole Luke Fox being a different generation thing. That's a lot of fun. What's happening there? And we are Robin number four. There is a silver lining to an incredibly dark cloud because some of the Robins get to hang out with Batgirl. It's also an excellent week for Secret Wars. We've got 1872 number three, Weird World number four, Captain Marvel and the Carol Corps number four, Runaways number four, and Years of Future Past number five. Hey, do you know our other weirdling, Sammy, who talks about comic books? We like to ask each other questions about comic books at the end of all of our videos. And she asked me a really good one last time. If my life were a comic book, who would be the creative team? This was pretty hard to figure out, but the artist was pretty easy, Megan Levins. She did Madame Frankenstein and her artwork is absolutely beautiful. For the coloring, I would definitely choose Jordi Belair because she uses these really bright, vibrant colors that I think fit my personality perfectly. Covers would alternate between Kevin Wada and Jenny Friesen because beautiful. Choosing a writer for my life story was really difficult. I want someone who can capture fun and spunky and almost a little crazy, but also anxious and self-doubting and the juxtaposition between those two personality characteristics. So after a little while of thinking, who did I choose? Kate Leth. I just got to use the word juxtaposition in our video. Yay! Vocabulary, level up! Before we get to some comments, be sure to like this video, share, and subscribe because we talk about comics all the time. All the time. Stefan Sedgwick made a really good point that I had never thought about. Being a comic book artist means that sometimes you get spoilers for your favorite stories. My love and respect for my favorite comic book artists has just gone through the roof because I can't even imagine what it would be like to read like Saga or say Rat Queens in script form only and be like, but I already know what's gonna happen now, but I, eh, that must be rough. Mary the Knitting Dev, who is also one of our contributors and you should go watch her videos, made a valid point that she would like to create time pockets for her secret power, but that's kind of a tricky deal. I mean, what if you get trapped in one of your time pockets or what if one of the time pockets goes incredibly haywire wrong and then it completely affects like the world outside of it? I don't know, it's tricky. In theory, it would be great because we all need more hours in our day. Just don't get trapped, Mary, because I'll miss you. Nick V said if he had a superpower, he would choose Domino's power, which is the power of good luck on her side. 
I always found this really interesting because like Black Cat, who he also mentions, Black Cat has like the powers of giving people bad luck when she crosses their path, supposedly. Marvel never actually confirms or denies that luck is a real thing. So when you look at the listings for both of their powers, it's sort of a kind of up in the air thing, like maybe luck is real, maybe it's not, which is always really interesting to me. So would you actually have the power or would it just all be in your mind? For those of you who have very recently fallen in hearts with Sammy, our other weirdling who talks about comic books, she's getting married this weekend. Not to me, disappointing, I know. But still, we're very, very happy for her. Mr. and Mrs. Sammy, we wish you the best of luck. But like real luck, not like maybe domino luck. Just so you know, this place that we are standing right now, we are at Austin Books and Comics. There should be a little Sims diamond for me at Austin Books and Comics. I don't, I don't think I'm making a real shape here. I think I'm making the shape of Marge Simpson's hair. Ouch! <laughs>